Africa is the second biggest continent on planet Earth with around 1 billion inhabitants. Democratic Republic Congo, a huge country with 80 million inhabitants, 20 million of them around Kinshasa. And here in the south we go for our expedition in search of big mosses. Modimbo in Kisi, then we go to the N16, a road it's a bit too much uh, to be said about this kind of structure, more kind of a, um, of a riverbed of dust. Here we find Kiloeka, little village with a unique caterpillar uh, cultivation, rearing and breeding project where um, they try to reintroduce the caterpillars that were earlier very important as food items. But now the adults are lost because of uh, over-harvesting and habitat destruction and we will go to a little um, forest on top of a hill where there was a little village in earlier time, Bondo Makeya. Now only three families left, all others went in the direction of Kinshasa. We have to walk there two hours uh, through the Savanna. And of course, uh, in the afternoon, people come back from the field work with fruits, vegetables, and wood for the fire to make the kitchen. And if you, everywhere you find this uh, burnt savanna, sign of a destructive form of agriculture, and everything is cut down, and um, all wood. It's transformed to charcoal in these structures that smoke for days. That little hill with the original forest and the um, houses that are left up there, we hope in this uh, original habitat that we find some of the rest populations of these edible insects that are famous not only in Congo, but in all uh, Africa. Augustin Kondo, the director of this uh, program, is already waiting. Chairs have been uh, carried here, also batteries and everything. There's no other road than the walking trail, and his team already cleaned out part of the forest for the arrival of the insects. Then we see the build, building up of the light trap with a screen towel and um, in front of the screen towel um, a construction to keep the cold cathode lamps. They simulate with the light frequencies the light from the moon and the insects think that they are flying towards the moon and land at the screen or near the screen or in the surrounding. And the night is perfect for that because this is the night without moon, the 22nd uh, August. Night comes in quick near the equator and uh, we have to hurry because uh, the insects are already waiting. This kind of light trap is specially made to be run with uh, car batteries. Uh, we carried two of these car batteries, 30 kilograms, up here, and as soon as we start, the light trap from everywhere, insects arrive from all the trees that surround the place. Also, for most of the people here, it's the first time they see the huge biodiversity of insects that live here in the night because during the day sometimes you don't see any insects now in the drier season uh, but in the night it's uh, like on another planet it's 
full with hundreds and thousands of insects and different species that arrive out of the night. Sphinx Neri, a big moss that we also know in Europe, travels from Africa to Europe sometimes, but also a lot of insects. We don't know the names, we have to look up in books. It's a very difficult thing to taxonomically say with what kind of insect it is. Augustin Condor fascinated. He was up all night watching all the insects arriving at the light trap and hoping for the big mosses to come. We know that they usually come in the morning when humidity is, is high and temperatures drop at around midnight already we realized that some uh, dew drops arrived on leaves and on the table that we carried here and a lot of mosses arrive also. Also some caterpillars of mosses are eaten here, but they are uh, not so big delicacies like the caterpillars of the big mosses that we are waiting for. Interestingly, not all the insects that are eaten in Asia are eaten in Africa, like for example these locust grasshoppers, catidates, a lot of them are not eaten here in Africa, but they are on the table in Asia everywhere. But also, vice versa, in Asia they don't eat the caterpillars of mosses. So you see that uh, eating insects is also a um, cultural construct, so it is not uh, everywhere. Uh, that they eat the same insect on it depends on your food identity, which insect you like and which you don't touch. That's really interesting that they don't eat ants in Africa, the same species, a cofilo, that we also find in Asia is untouched here. But this grasshopper cleans his antenna. Sometimes he's disturbed by other insects flying around his head. But he takes it real serious. They like to sit at the light trap in the light, in the ultraviolet light of these lamps. Yeah, probably they hope to find some partners for it's like on another planet the night here at the light trap you have to change a little bit your dimension that you see how big and fragile and diverse these insects are. There is four different species of mosses here. And it's pearl, mother of pearl. Uh, in shimmering insect with interesting coloration. Oh, is there a condor taking pictures and pictures and pictures. It's one of his uh, main projects now. He was born 1953 here in Kiloeka. He knows the forest from his own times. That's the biggest insect we caught this night. Over 20 centimeter Lobogunea fedusa with these big eyes. The adult of the famous Cobble caterpillar. That was one of the biggest delicacies here in Bakongo, but also in other parts of uh, Africa and the yellow mosses that you can see are Nuda Aurelia Dione, also 
head of the Hunedi Broadcaster, Peter. We will take them to our laboratory for breeding. And here you see a death head. Most we know them also in Europe because they sometimes travel from Africa to Europe. Well, you see that in this little forest up the hill, in a piece of um, not destroyed habitat, you find you'll find this uh, oh, yeah. like another example of local Buneo fetusa, a male with worn out wings. Now, fire was made to relax, but as soon as the insect arrived, everybody was on its feet trying to catch the insect that came to the light trap to see whether it's a species that we would like to rear and breed in the laboratory. Autumn morning comes fast in 10 minutes, it's day in the equator, and then it's time for the first coffee after this successful night out in the little forest in the African night. <laughs> Only two families left here in this little village. All others have migrated to bigger villages. But one old lady was up already and we showed her the adults of the caterpillars that she likes to eat. And it's the first time she saw the adults that come out from these caterpillars. <laughs> Yeah, and for us it's uh, the catch of the day that goes back to Kiloeka, two hours through the savannah in Bakongo. <laughs> 